Hi, welcome to another manga reading vlog. Yeah, I had a great time with the previous vlog and got pretty positive feedback on the last one. So I decided to do another one and this time I went through my list again and I was like, mm, what shall I read? And then I saw W. Ju w Juliet. That is like one of my cult favorite series when I was younger. And so I was like, okay, this is the time to read this again because you love this so much. And um, what is it about? It's essentially about a new girl that comes to the school and she's really beautiful. She has blonde hair. She's clearly mixed. And everybody is in awe of her. She just joins the drama club. Well, the main character, um, a girl who dresses up like a guy because she looks very masculine. She, she's very tall. And they encounter each other. And we soon realize that the new girl that transfers into the school is actually a boy. And the circumstance is that he is actually cosplaying as a girl. A challenge to his father. If he can survive the school year, the entire and the entirety of his school years in high school as a girl and no one finds out, then he can he can fulfill his dream as an actor and not be the successor to his family's dojo. So that's the plan. But then he's already found out by main, other main characters. So you know drama ensues. I'm very excited. I love this story so much like it's so ridiculous as to how people don't realize that he's a girl but i don't care i'm just enjoying myself i'm en i'm just enjoying the experience of them being cute together i'm just enjoying the art style and loving it and just i love people who are into acting and like yeah i'm into that i love the industry in terms of like the glorified part of the industry not the not the non-glorified part but yeah, so that's why I'm reading that. And that's about 10 volumes. So I assume that I would probably take around 3 to 4 days to finish it. So yes, I'll keep you guys updated on the status of this and probably give you more insight into um, how the um, series is going for me. But otherwise, please enjoy the... Yeah, okay. See you. I'm currently on the third volume of W Juliet and I'm really enjoying it as I expected but strangely enough even though we're following characters who are essentially 17 years old they are second year students in high school I'm surprised at the maturity of these characters because obviously I read this years ago and I don't know the difference between a mature and non-mature relationship because I was like 13 or 14 years old and I don't know what a relationship is <coughs> and so I was quite surprised by the way the characters act and how mature they are in their responses towards each other yes they do have some childish like approaches to things but that is just a very humanistic quality rather than them being actually actually childish characters and um, so I mean clearly like I said before, manga is just so unrealistic and you just have to go in and close two eyes to enjoy the story. And honestly, I don't know how this 17 year old boy can dress up as a girl and sort of fake it till he makes it. Because Adam's apple, do people not see that? Like, can his voice really be high enough that people think he's a girl? There's so many things that just makes it so dubious for him and you know, sometimes he actually accidentally, like, not accidentally, but he, he, he's forced into a situation where he, he is, um, dressed up as a guy and people from his current life uh, sees him in that getup and will not be able to, like, connect the two dots, which I understand. And also, which I understand, I guess, but you know, like, they, they look so alike. Okay, well, I guess if I think... And I know someone is a girl 
seeing a guy version of them wouldn't make me think like, oh my god, are they pretending to be a guy? That's true. That's true. Okay, justified. Justified indeed. But still, if he has an Adam's apple, would you not see that? Alright. Anyway, so with the relationship right now, it progressed very quickly because in the first um, chapter, essentially, of the first volume, they're immediately uh, drawn to each other and they're immediately like already entering some sort of relationship. But it seems that... I thought that they were actually dating and already official. But it seems like they are technically still in the dating phase despite being quite seri- serious with, with each other and essentially are exclusively dating each other. But I think they didn't really ask the question of like, can you be my boyfriend or girlfriend? And it seems like it's established that the guy, like the character who is pretending to be a girl, Makoto, Makoto kind of doesn't want to commit, not because he doesn't love her, but because he feels like it's unfair to commit to her when he's strapped by his current circumstance. So that's really fair for him. And like I said, very mature character. And he plans to like make it official by the time they graduate. So I get that. I get that. But already he's pla- he's already exclusively dating her. He's already made his intentions very very known to her, which is our main character, uh, Ito. Yeah. And so Ito is is really enamored by him. And two of them are very different types of personalities. Like Makoto is someone who is very calm and collected, while Ito is someone who is very fiery and passionate and. Uh, loud and boisterous and I love their dynamic together they are so adorable and you know despite having their miscommunications I feel like as a couple as friends especially that they 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 choose to communicate with each other yes they get jealous that's just normal for people but they communicate with each other they they choose to communicate they choose to make a stance to at least talk to each other even though Sometimes for a while, they will get a little pissed and not want to talk to each other. But I get that. I get that because, like I said, even mature people can make childish moves. That's just being a human. I'm really into the story right now. I'm just enjoying their progress as a couple and all the trials and tribulations that are put against them, especially Makoto, who has to pretend to be a girl, and, and all the external factors that are essentially keeping each other away from each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Talking about the fact that because clearly Makoto is a girl in the sh- in the premise where he is pretending to be a girl, so everybody treats him like a girl. I'm surprised that the people around them don't think that there's a chance that Ito and Makoto could be a couple, and that they are not just like super best friends. From the way they act, honestly, if I was the bystander friend, I might actually think that freaking lesbians like because Ito is obviously a girl even though she looks masculine she's still a girl and so you know I'm surprised by that as in in the way that this you know when this manga was written quite some time ago yes it is rather progressive in the way it addresses um you know being queer of some sort you know but it's not directly addressing it as well which makes it iffy in a lot of ways but I get that because that time period was not it was not very acceptable and especially now in Japan even it's not necessarily very well accepted despite Yaoi and Yuri which is gay and lesbian a manga being really popular as a genre but people still don't really accept them in real life so in any case okay so I mean do people not think that Ito could be lesbian one two also um there are people there's like a a senpai that's essentially crushing on Ito but nothing about that is being addressed and she's like a girl and she really likes Ito but it's like does she like him because does she like Ito because she looks like a guy or does she like Ito just because she's Ito I don't know not addressed either in terms of that but our main character Ito is definitely you know Shang in Mulan where Shang falls in love with Mulan not too sure if he's falling in love with a man or falling in love with a woman point is it could mean that he's bi it could mean that he's pan I don't like labels, so it doesn't matter. As long as you love who you love, I'm okay with that. And so, Ito kind of is like that bisexual icon that Shang is, you know, in that sense. Where she is falling in love with a guy, but with the appearance of a girl. And it's just a mix of everything. And she's loving, like, both sides of him, essentially. Like, she's she thinks that he's beautiful, but at the same time, he's such a man, I guess, strong. 
talking about Ito, because Ito's appearance is really, she's so boyish. Um, she really looks like a guy. I have to say that I totally struggled with this back when, back when I cut off a lot of my hair. Because I was like, you know what, Emma Watson did that after the last Harry Potter movie and she looks so dope and so sexy and I want to look like Emma Watson. I will look like Emma Watson if I just cut that super sharp pixie cut. No, I ended up looking horrible and essentially looking like an idiot. And it was a fun time, but essentially I look like a short lesbian girl and people actually question my orientation as a person. Yeah, my own like extended family asked me if I was into girls and that it was okay if I was into girls. Yeah, I get that you're supporting me, but please don't like assume that I just like girls simply because I choose to look like that. And it's not because of that really, I just wanted to look like Emma Watson. So you, you kind of misunderstood my point, but exactly with that for Ito, like she actually really enjoys wearing like male wear and she likes short hair because she just enjoys the flexibility of wearing pants because she... Her family also owns like a karate like dojo and so she she learns how to do karate. She learns martial arts from her family. And so it makes sense that she cares about clothes that can give her movement and doesn't like hinder her movement and doesn't expose her and comfortable for her because she's grown up around like four other brothers or is it three other brothers? Yeah, three other brothers and also she learns martial arts which means she really cares for clothes that are comfortable and from that I feel like a lot of people also assume that she might be lesbian at least for her own family members they're like oh when she brought home Makoto for the first time they're like is that your lover and I was like oh gosh okay not you guys <laughs> assuming that about her first of all it's kind of to me it's rude but at the same time like whatever this is just common behavior and whether to uh, condone that or not doesn't really matter to me I guess some people might find it hurtful. I'm someone who just takes it as a pinch of salt because I don't really care about their opinion. So yeah, and she knows that essentially the brothers are joking. But as long as you know, I guess, some people might find it uncomfortable. Yeah, but anyway, I'm loving their romance. Like I said, very mature for 17-year-olds, which I like. I don't really care for a realistic 17, 18-year-old relationship. I like something that is people who are mature, I like people who know what they want, you know, and are able to communicate despite their miscommunication sometimes. Yes, so I'll keep you guys updated, but I'll continue reading, and I'm enjoying myself so damn much. Alright, bye. to update you guys um i actually already did but the file got corrupted i don't know how i should not question it i shall just refilm what i spoke about um so in that clip i talked about how much i'm enjoying um how much i'm enjoying my reread of w juliet which is i'm currently at the hmm, which I'm currently at volume 9 and I'm entirely enjoying myself and you know there's so much I want to talk about um, before we wrap up the vlog soon so let's talk about um, first the romance it's progressing really well like I said before they're very mature and they're very adorable and they're very cute and I love that they communicate and they have their jealous moments but they're always there for each other no matter what and that's what I treasure so much about the relationship. But pushing that all aside, I want to talk about the other components that I have not talked about before, which is the importance of family in the series. Because dude, there's always so much absentee families within Sojo mangas. Like we hardly talk about the parents involved, we hardly talk about the siblings they are there. Or even if they're siblings, they're like extremely young in comparison, or they're extremely much older in comparison. 
and I so I really 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 like the familiar component here and how important family is to the two characters and how their families are very 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 important to them and that they are very involved with their upbringing so for our main character Makoto, he is um, surrounded by sisters or he has our older sisters he has three older sisters and they take very good care of him in their own ways and you can see how the upbringing of their very strict household has impacted all of them in different manners and talking about this familiar relationship we're not only just seeing how involved the family is with the characters but we're seeing how um the f we can see how the families themselves um, react to certain situations around them seeing a little bit of their story seeing a little bit of their background and understanding them as characters on their own as well and i really appreciated that because this series is long for a story about life and love actually having to focus on these other characters to provide a lot of insight into our main character and it's really nice to see the family involved and how their very 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 strict father has impacted them in a lot of ways and created a lot of trauma for them and how they respond to their own trauma individually whether it's with hatred whether it's it with rebellion or whether it's just to you know accept accept it for how it is and to just let life be because there's no other way out and it's very interesting to see the different responses from these different siblings and they're so unlike each other even though ultimately they all love their brother very very much and that was very heartening to see and for our other main character Ito she lost her mother when she was very very young but she was at an age where she still remembers her mom if I'm not wrong she lost her mom when she was, in, when she was 9 or 10 years old and so she's essentially brought up with by her brother because it seems like her father is there but he's not really taking part in that whole like bringing up Ito thing maybe because he's a guy but either way she has two older brothers who are the, uh, who are twins and a younger brother who is a little bit younger than herself and they're all such good brothers to her and they love her so much and you know Ito is a character who is a girl who looks like a guy because she always pretends to be a guy not because she actually wants to but because she felt like being a guy shows a lot of strength and she gets through she's able to be She's able to do a lot of other things that a girl is otherwise restricted and for her that is actually to do with the fact that her dad runs a dojo and all this time she's always wanted to learn um, she's always wanted to learn the martial arts that her dad teaches but he refused to teach her because of the fact that she's a girl and how she looks so cute and so pretty and that he didn't want to ruin that image of her but she didn't care and all she wanted to be is a boy in order to learn all these things and be like her brothers and receive that kind of equal treatment from their dad and that was actually her being her but not actually her wanting to be a guy and so you see the brothers really support her in this story and how they love her so much and will do anything for her and essentially take really really good care of her um, and you know when she screws up they never miss I, I like that when a character screws up, like you know when they skip school or some things like that. In other mangas, other social mangas that I've read, sometimes the parents don't even know that the kids are missing, but for this, there's a consequence. So at some point, Ito uh, skips school for whatever reason it is, and she she gets confronted by her, older, her oldest brother, the older twin, and he becomes very angry and grounds her. But he has his reason because he knows that he will be the one to protect her now that mom has gone and as the oldest brother he has to protect her in place of the two parents even like I said even though like I said the dad is still involved doesn't matter and second brother which is the younger twin has become almost like the mother figure of the family where he learns how to cook he's really like more genteel with his siblings even though he is still very much a guy it's not like he becomes a lady, what I mean is that he's very gentle with his methods, he's doing more of the household chore work and he's a chef and whatsoever and you see how he cares for Ito in a different way because of what his mother has said to him. You're seeing the impact of um, mother's death on these boys and Ito and you see how they respond to their loss in their own different ways 
and how they remember their mom in their own different ways and how that has impacted the way that they love others as well. And I thought it was very heartening and very, very truthful to real life in a lot of ways. And that's what I really appreciate. But other than the fam family stuff, I love that W. Juliet addresses the idea of growing up. Because yes, it is a sojo manga, it is about romance, it is about the cutesy romance that the two of them have. We also address very real adult issues that these two characters will eventually face because Makoto clearly wants to be an actor and being an actor is not easy and that's why his father is not the most supportive even though it's also about running the dojo but I guess it's more of like, you know, being an actor, there's no future to that which as an Asian, let's be real, as an Asian or anybody really, let's be real, doesn't our parents all tell us that, like being an actor has no future? They don't give us an acting career because they know that there's simply no future to that. They make us learn the piano but don't want us to be the pianist. They, they get us to take acting classes but don't actually want us to be like real full-time actors. They get us to learn ballet but they don't actually want us to be ballerinas. Because they know that the industry is tough and it's hard to succeed and usually you'll be in the back burner most of the time. But that's sometimes. But Mangadon really wants to chase his dreams and he's very sure about himself, which is a great thing. And something that I truly envy in a person so young such as him, who is technically um, 17 or 18 years old. But for Ito, she is not the most um, sure about her dream. She thought she wants to be an actress, but to say that it might have been influ influenced by Makoto is not exactly wrong because it only got revealed to us after Makoto came around and you don't know whether it's his strong, strong pass passion towards acting that caused her to be this way. But point is, she wants to be an actress but at the same time she's not sure. She's not sure if she has the guts for it, that she can be the best action actress that she can be in her generation. She's not sure if this is really what she wants or is this her following it. Uh, Makoto step or whatsoever and I love to see her struggle with that even though it's just one chapter of the volume I love seeing her struggle with that and thinking about her future in a way because to be truthful with you guys I'm sure a lot of us don't actually know what we want to do with our lives for me when I was that age I most definitely did not know what I wanted to do I was just rushing through my studies and hoping that I can succeed or something and that if I succeed, I can choose whatever the hell I want. But unfortunately for me, that was not the case. And I was trapped. And suddenly there were so many things in my life that I wanted to do, but I could not. But point is that I never truly knew what exactly I was striving for. And I don't know if that is the case for most of you guys, but I assume that it is. And that even now at 25, I still struggle with that idea of what exactly do I want? Even in my career right now, I'm thinking... Do I still want to be a nurse? Do I want to change my industry? Because right now, as you know, I'm, I'm taking up studies to change my industry. And, and for reasons being that the industry sucks and therefore I don't want to be a nurse anymore. It's really tiring to be one. And for that reason, I'm thinking of leaving. But at the same time, I really love nursing. And so this kind of real life complications we face all the time and that we are always wondering what is the best path for ourselves and whether it is the best path and to see two different sides of the story where one is kind of um unsure of the path that they're taking and the other so sure of the path they're taking that i really first of all relate a lot to marco uh, i relate a lot to ito but also i envy makoto a lot so yeah two sides of the story that i felt that was very great to bring up and i think Teenagers read this not would teenagers who read this series would get something out of it without knowing that they actually got this out of it, you know? Yeah. In other news, other than reading W Juliet, I actually have started watching One Piece again. I watched One Piece when I was a little tween, you know, because my seniors were deadly in love with One Piece and I wanna join the gang. You know, I want to be the ones that understood what they're talking about and so I decided to start One Piece for fun on one school night and couldn't stop watching it until 3am in the morning and I was like, Jesus Christ, what is wrong with you? And yeah, I was madly in love with One Piece. I love One Piece so much. I really, really, really do. And like when I was a tween, I was so madly in love with Trafalgar Law 
who is my favorite character, okay, he he has tattoos over his hands, okay, and I drew those tattoos with like permanent marker or whiteboard marker. Hey, dude. Um, my teacher spotted me and she was like, "Get that off your freaking hands. Wash it off, please, because that is just unbecoming of a lady." And I was like, "No." I defied her right there. I was like, "No." Because I love these tattoos, you ain't gonna get me get it off me. It's fake anyway. Why do you care? It's kind of rude, but who gives a shit? I love those tattoos, but not that I actually want it in real life anymore. I just thought that makes him really hot. Yeah, and I really like that two day, three years thing, which a reference that you won't get unless you did watch One Piece. So yeah, I really like that one too. And I drew that like a huge one on my arm, like here. And then I was like, yeah, I love that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep doing that until, um, I don't know, until I get sick of it. Anyway, point is, when I reached junior college, I think One Piece started to go a lot because I reached a point where I was catching up every, uh, I'm catching up with every episode each week and, you know, anybody who watched or reads One Piece should know that each chapter or episode is kind of draggy, like, you literally do not know what's going on. I think battery, so I need to rush this, but point is, I'm enjoying One Piece a lot. I'm getting into it like really, really fast. And I'm loving the process. I'm loving getting back into the world, listening to our voice actors do their wonderful work. And I miss One Piece. You know, years away from it has made me learn to love it more. So, I'm watching it with a lot of fun um, and happiness in my heart. So, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep diligently watching One Piece you know, whenever I feel like it and not stress myself about like continuing on because I want like many episodes ahead of me so I can binge watch anytime I want to. So yeah, One Piece used to suck for me because of how draggy it is but now I miss it too much and now I'm back. So keep you guys updated and then that's when we will end the vlog. Okay. And as promised, it's time to close out the vlog. I finished W Juliet last night. And as you can see from my eyes, I might have balled a little bit too hard with this. You know, when I finished it, I went to sleep. After crying, God came into my dreams and he told me that... I have to let go of my fictional boyfriends, my fictional husbands, my fictional girlfriends, my fictional wives, my fictional relationships in order to feel fulfilled in my real life relationship. And I told God, no way, I can't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, wow, um, Makoto and Ito are just freaking perfect. Okay, they are flawed in their own ways. They have their cons they have their they have their weaknesses and they have their um strengths and both of them complement each other so well which i've said over and over again and most importantly is that they're always communicating and so despite having many hurdles in front of them aka people who like ito who are stopping um people who like okay makoto's like side love interest is trying to stop Makoto and Ito from being together while Ito's side love interests are stopping the two of them from getting together and honestly you know there can be so much miscommunication between the two there can actually be so much doubt between the two but they choose to communicate and talk about their feelings and actually acknowledge that they just love each other very much and want the best out of the both of each other and that nothing can really stop them from loving each other as strongly as they do and it's just so sweet and you can see like them come to a conclusion and how makoto is growing up to be someone who is makoto is growing up to be a really like fine young man and ito is finally coming into terms with herself being a girl which we, we we get a little bit of a backstory of why she even wanted to be a tomboy before and I explained that it's because she felt inferior to, to the siblings that she has. And it's true. And in fact, it, it's it further... And in fact, it's, it's further exacerbated by a boy who bullies her in her, um, her... A boy that bullies her 
in kindergarten and that really further elevated the fact that she felt like being a girl was weak and um all those things which was not true and i think that she comes to that eventually it's just about equipping herself with the skills that is martial arts you know defending herself learning to defend herself anyway point is a theme that a theme that appears over and over again with this story is the theme of going and chasing your dreams because clearly he starts out with a protagonist which is Makoto who is chasing his dreams being an actor and his father is not approving of his situation but other than that um essentially they essentially they're always encountering people who are not chasing their dreams or they're being bogged down by people's expectations parental expectations and whatsoever and they don't chase their dreams and the two of them are always encouraging others to do so and you can see that over and over again where where people have doubt and they're shown over and over again that choosing the path that you want most is the most important thing choosing a path that makes you happy choosing the path that you want is going to make you the most happy and it is most important to you and i found it so admirable to see people chasing your dreams and likewise for myself currently trying to chase a dream that i've otherwise not let myself dream but at the same time i realize that there are things in life that i don't choose to chase because of what people tell me and a lot of self doubt and a lot of fear against succeeding you know like whether i would succeed or not and i think it's important to see that that you have to push you have to push yourself to the fullest to the stars to the moon whatever in order for your dreams to come true because you can't just say that you want this to happen but don't do anything about it and you can see evidently with makoto and ito the both of them pushing themselves to the 101% to be an actor and actress and not that they are slacking off and hoping for things to come by and just accepting face value as face value they they make an effort to choose their dreams they chase after their dreams i think it's just wonderful to see young people do that i understand that this is real but still i hope that it imparts a great message to all young ones you know young people young girls that are young girls and boys who are reading this and feel like they can achieve their dreams if they push hard enough you know if they try their best if they if they just put in enough effort their dreams will come true for them so yeah and that's actually pretty much everything that i want to talk about this i am deadly in love with the series and i think yes unlike kitchen princess which you can watch the vlog up there but um unlike kitchen princess this is quite different in the sense that like i i think that the story was even much better than much much better than kitchen princess that it's not just kitchen princess has different themes but they don't explore them too in depthly but with w juliet i felt like they did more exploration that it was not told to the reader that you should go chase your dreams but it was implied that you should implied through the familial bonds that you see between the characters is implied that family is important is implied that dreams are important you know all those things and it's implied that you know love can conquer all too and i really really love that um i'm not really someone who believes in love per se like you know the cheesiness of love i really don't but for my fictional characters for my fictional boyfriend and girlfriend and husband and wife whatever i believe this wholeheartedly for you because fiction you know yeah so that's that and i thought that i should update you with one piece because i was so rushed to explain about one piece the other day so here it is i am currently on the big mama arc which is actually where i stopped when i was watching it previously and you know what i don't forget anything i'm really right in i'm enjoying it um it's draggy as per usual but i'm okay with it i'm just taking it in and being like yeah you knew this going in so it's just time to accept it if you don't accept it just stop for a while and like take take a step back and then maybe come back to it later. So I'm really enjoying one piece right now and we are the big mama out which is um you know you're going to fight big mama essentially uh one of the four conquer emperors one of the four emperors of the sea 
and yeah very exciting very exciting i want to continue watching it i'm very very into it because i told you like it is a nostalgic factor for me it it the voice acting the everything nostalgic i just find it so funny the jokes are so freaking lame like oda's jokes is so lame in terms of like it being very childish you know but i love it i love the childish freaking humor and i'm living for it yeah so i guess i just read like 14 volumes of manga over the week and i love the experience and um all that and i don't want to talk about anything bad about w juliet but also i want to talk about how this like yeah uh, so, like, essentially, this the end of the vlog, I finished 14 volumes of manga, which is completing the entire W. Juliet um, series, and I'm glad, and I watched, like, 10 episodes of One Piece, and I'm loving it. We'll keep you guys updated in the next manga vlog, for sure. And so, if you guys enjoyed watching this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.